lives are we supposed to start the podcast? Listen up, listener. We have a special guest in our pre-show today, and it is my favorite son, <laughs> my soulmate, my companion like none other, Tubbers. Little Tubbers couldn't be separated from Mama. And he's in my lap, and he wanted to be on the podcast today. And we have received some uh, messages on the social media of people saying, I've had it with not seeing Tubbers. And so today is their day. Yes, yes. And, you know, we also have received some messages on social media claiming that you are the real star of the podcast. <laughs> so in that vein, I'm going to let the real star tell us what she's had it with. What I've had it with is people filming themselves crying and posting it on the internet. It's unbelievable. Like, I'm going to cry, I'm going to record myself, and then I'm going to post it for sympathy. I mean, I, 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 I cannot wrap my head around it. Are you getting this in your, like, For You feed, like with the mukbang? I don't know. It, I think it just came up. I think it's TikTok. I think that's that was the offender. And I'm just like, why is this happening? Who would do this? I mean, of course, they're exponentially younger, like 20s. Right. Young, young, maybe even right. younger than that. Right. But then I've also seen specifically where Emily has sent me somebody that I know that's posted about herself crying. And I just, I've had it with that. That's, Is there no decorum or etiquette? To me, that's such a, pardon the pun, cry for help. It's such a cry for attention. Yeah. I mean, that is so pathetic. It is so pathetic, especially when it's like, my boyfriend broke up with me, so now I'm going to record myself crying. Like, bitch, have some pride. I think people are just doing too many things on the internet. Agree. There's just, it, the oversharing is out of control. Agree. What about the people that are like crying and they're holding up like pieces of paper and it's like, I just, and then they do another page, found out my mom has breast cancer and they keep doing the pages when they could just speak, but they do it via, you know, like I've had it with that love actually where the guy does it. Yes. Now that's cute. That's adorable. And that's a movie and it's fiction and it never happened, but people are doing this on the internet. Like, you know, to bring awareness to maybe an earthquake or hurricane and they're doing the cards. It's too much. I just completely would not even watch till the end. Cause I'm like, if you can't tell me within the first few seconds, I don't want to know. Right. If I have to go through 47 card changes. Right. To find out why you're upset. I also have seen where it's like, um, I'm feeling really lonely today. If you could give me a shout out, that'd make me feel better. And I'm like, is, is that necessary to say you're feeling lonely and ask for random strangers to say hi? And de- does that help? Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about when people just randomly post like... I'm going through a lot. Pray for me. And that's all they tell you. Right. Okay. I think they're Tubby, dying for you to direct message and ask. Tubby has left the, the podcast, everybody. No more tubs in the chair. Okay. When people post something super cryptic, like everybody pray for my sister. She's going through a lot. See, I think that is just you are dying for somebody right. to reach out and say, oh my gosh, what's going on? Like your friends that have your number or people on direct message that you don't know. Well, the problem with that is, is when I see something like that, then I'm going to mutual friends. I'm clicking on the people that comment on that. I'm trying to figure out what happened. And because you need to know. Right. Because they're they're putting it out there. And I think it's chicken shit to not just say what it is that's the problem. They're trying to con- control and make the attention last longer. Right. So they get more attention of, oh my gosh, what's wrong, blah, blah, blah. Right. And all the comments are the same. You can do it, or I'm with you, just like stupid shit. Prayer warriors unite. I mean, it's just I've too had much. It. I've had it. And it's like, if something's going on, if it's super juicy, that's all the more reason if you're going to go to the internet, just go ahead and take it over right. the finish line. Right. Take it over the finish line. Please pray for me. My husband, I just busted my husband with a bunch of cocaine and a prostitute. Right. Then I'm like, okay. Right. Thank you so much for landing the plane and for not being cryptic about this because now we all know what the fuck is going on. And that frees up the rest of my day. And I don't have to, 
you know, deep dive dive. into Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is to figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah. I think those kind of posts are designed to keep people asking what the problem is. Right. I mean, I think it's a total and complete attention seeking behavior. It just amazes me how much people feel like they need to share online with other people. Like crying. I mean, that's the number one example. It is too much. It is too much. It's too much. I mean, I only cry maybe like once a year. Right. And I'm dead serious. I mean, I'm not a crier either. I just, it takes a lot for me to cry. The last thing I'm going to think about when I'm crying is filming it. Getting a phone and filming it, making sure I look cute. I mean, that is ridiculous. It's bananas. It's bananas. Let me tell you what I've had it with. All right. I've had it with this racket. And it is a total fucking scam perpetrated on the American public every single day. And it is breaking news. Oh, my gosh. I hate. It's not breaking if you've been talking about it for five hours. And it's abused. It is abused. So much that I'm so desensitized right. from what breaking news actually is. Agree. And all of the news channels do it. Yep. And everything is breaking news. Right. And it's not breaking news. No. There's nothing breaking about it because, like, when I get up in the morning, I would turn it on. And then that night, I would turn on the news. It, they're still saying breaking news. And it's like, we've had 12 hours. I think. It cannot still be breaking news. I'll get an alert on my phone and it says breaking news. And I don't even really look at it anymore Agreed. because I know it's a blowhard event. Right. No. It's a total blowhard event that is a nothing burger. Right. I absolutely could not agree more. Mm-hmm. I do think that CNN got a bunch of backlash on always having the breaking news and supposedly they're better, but I don't know because I don't watch them anymore. No, I only watch the BBC and it's only breaking if it's major. Right. It's breaking if a war starts or it's breaking if somebody dies. Right. Or a presidential election is called. Right. Right. It is not breaking for a week. Donald Trump sends a 3 a.m. tweet. I mean, that was just like breathing oxygen. Right. You know, it just was not breaking news. Right. And so, I mean, I am just up to my eyeballs with the American news system. So I want to welcome everybody to I've Had It podcast. And I am a minor supporting player in this podcast. I'm Jennifer. The real star <laughs> is Angie. Hi, I'm Angie. Why are you acting that way? That was two comments. The real star is Angie. We call her Pumps. This is I've Had It Podcast, a podcast where you can visit twice weekly right, and get all the shit off your chest so that when you go back out into the real world, right. you're nicer and calmer right. and ready. You can get all your bitches out. Yes. And just and know that you are amongst your people. This is a dump truck of petty grievances yep. via a mass therapy session because one thing that we oppose fundamentally is the statement you can find positivity in everything oh my gosh ridiculous there are some things that are so insufferable right the only option you have is to get with friends and bitch about and it and bitch and that is therapeutic 100% oh my gosh i have a story i haven't even told you what is it Okay, so I went to uh, a deal at my youngest school. Okay. They had a speaker that was talking about being congenial Uh and high character. Uh And she starts going into, when I go to the grocery store, I always ask the checker how their day's going. I ask the bagger how their day's going. I chat with the people in front of me and behind me in the grocery line. And the whole time I'm breaking out in hives going, Please never let me have to go to the grocery store with her. This like is a she, classic not taking into account the no. feelings of the checker, the bagger. None of them. And the people in line. And she thinks, you know what she is? She's a bragger, fake, do-gooder. She's and assuming that everybody wants her to ask them how they are. They don't. And that she's doing them a favor right. by doing so. This is this is faux do-gooder shit. Faux do-gooder. This is faux do-gooder shit. And she is a problem, a huge problem for every grocery store. 
that she enters. Like she's like the person you want to avoid in a grocery store. The last thing I want somebody to do when I'm in line at the checkout counter is to turn around and chit chat with me. I can't imagine anything worse. And I'll tell you what would be worse. I just imagined it. If you're in a hurry, you're trying to get your groceries checked and she's yak mouthing with the checker about something no one cares about. And you're waiting on her to be quote unquote congenial with her fake and courteous fake do gooder shit fake do gooder i wanted to stand up in the middle of the auditorium and go bitch nobody <laughs> wants to talk to you but i didn't right because i am the beacon of the high road i think it is an immediate red flag Huge. when somebody tells you what a great fucking person they are based on their behavior in a grocery store <laughs> You know, like that is an immediate, you know, she's fucked up immediately. And I can't believe that somebody would think that this person should be a public speaker. Right. You know, like, right. let me tell you, kids, here's the trick to life. Be nice to people in grocery stores. Here's my problem with that. That's a given. Be nice to everybody. You should not have to tell people to be nice right. to people in grocery stores because that should be your default setting. Right. It should also be your default setting, not to start chit-chatting and hold up the line and do all that nonsense in a grocery store. It, you can very kindly look at the checker and say, hey, how's it going? Right. Well, they're scanning Scan your, your items. card. Move, have a great day. Move on down the road. Right. I, have a good one. That's a good one. Have a good one. Right. Have a great week. Mm -hmm. Well, today we're going to have a guest and this guest is going to talk to us about pop culture and all of the fuckery that's going on on Instagram and TikTok. So let's go ahead and bring out Amanda Hirsch. Hello. Hi. Hello, Amanda. We would like to welcome you to I've Had It Podcast. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. We're so excited to learn pop culture stuff. <laughs> I'm excited. I loved the concept of your pod. I was like, I've had it with so much shit. But... <laughs> it's a minefield of had it. I mean, there is just so much shit that happens when you go out on the internet in public to an airport. It's a minefield of fuckery that can go down. And you and we, uh, we consider this place a holy place where you can come <laughs> And dump all of this stuff out in a very therapeutic way so that when you have to go back out into the world again, you're kinder and lighter <laughs> and a better person having done this dump truck of petty grievances <laughs> with us. I love it. And so does that mean you don't get people who are like, you know, annoying about things you complain about? Like people don't tell you that you're, you know, privileged and that you're complaining about things. Oh, yeah, we get all stupid. kinds of stuff, like on TikTok and everything. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Amanda. I was the most hated woman on TikTok because I'm like, women, adult women that baby talk are ridiculous. I mean, huge backlash. What's your position on women that baby talk? Wait, to a baby or no. like to a grown up? To, to a grown an adult. Up. To another adult. Not, not a pet, not, not a, a pet child. or a baby. I'm fine with baby talk with a pet or a baby. But like, I don't think that men and women need to talk and baby talk. Oh my God. And you got real backlash. No, this is why I need to stay away from TikTok. I have a feeling it's not the place for me. <laughs> and I have been, you know, like old people that don't want to like conform to the times and like stay with their Nokia phones. And like, that's me. I feel like I'm like, yeah. TikTok is just, I don't get it. It doesn't get me. Like I just signed up like a week ago. My algorithm still doesn't get me. It's showing me women putting on concealer. I'm like, why does it think <laughs> that this is what I want to see? Like, and everyone's like, the algorithm will get you. And I'm like, it's not getting me. Um, so what do I think? I, I think it's creepy. I am not into it. Excellent. I don't even think you made me think if I baby talk my baby. And I don't even think I baby talk my baby. Right. Well, let's get to what you have had it with. And I think that you just tapped into it, which is this makeup tutorials, which we've kind of had it with acronyms too, but Pumps, I'm going to teach you a new one. It's okay. the G-R-W-M. Amanda, I'm going to let you take it from here. Teach the so old lady what this is. I don't even know what that is. 
I first of all, I, I feel like this is a, really a space, safe space for me. <laughs> um, so it's get ready with me. It took me forever to even have the, you know, motivation and the, the, you know, to care enough to Google it. Cause at first I was like groom, like I didn't get what it meant. Um, <laughs> I don't but, know what and I, I had a friend, uh, came on my podcast. She said she thought it meant like grown woman, like a acronym. For <laughs> um, so for some reason I was saying about my algorithm and I feel like a lot of these people that get famous on TikTok, part of what they do is just like, so it used to be a makeup tutorial. It used to be like, okay, this is what I use. You know, if you're a fucking idiot and don't know how to apply mascara, <laughs> here I'm showing you. So that alone, stupid, I've had it. Right. The new thing, so everyone's hopping on this trend, is like they put the headband. So it's either the headband with like little ears to be cute <laughs> or it's like these clips. Oh my God, I have them right here. Oh, I know exactly. You know the these clips. clips? Yes. 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 These clips. I had to get them. See how fucking influenced? I don't even know what to do with them. Um, they're supposed to like just make your hair go away from your face to like put on makeup or whatever. So now it's like these people are doing the same thing, but they're talking to you. Right. So about random doing, shit. Right. Like trauma, you right. know. Not about like, the makeup. Right. So it's not cool <laughs> anymore. It's passe to talk about what you're doing and be like, this is my concealer. This is my, you know, eyeshadow. Now it's like, so this guy I was, you know, dating and people are fucking into it. So that's all that's popping up for me. A that- lots of concealer. I was also influenced. They all use Kosas. So I bought it. <laughs> so immediately um, you ran out and got them. Immediately. Yeah. I have concealer. It's not like I ran out. It's like, I need this because <laughs> apparently people just wear concealer all day everywhere. Like, I didn't even know you put on your chin. Like, oh, I didn't you know do- that. Here's my deal with this, Amanda. I don't want to get ready with me. No, I don't either. So the last thing I want to fucking do is invite Instagram or TikTok to get ready with me. My husband brings me coffee every morning and I spend time with my adorable French bulldogs. I do Wordle. I do some other puzzles that you end up doing when you hit, you know, 40s, late 40s ish. And then I'm like, God, I don't want to get out of the bed and get in the shower. I'm like dreading the getting ready part because the fluffing in the bed is so right. fucking good. So then I finally go to get ready. And then my husband will start talking to me and he's, he, he's like a total metrosexual like he has these serums the sea salt spray he's totally into it he, he could would, put any gay man to shame he RuPaul would, he could put him to shame he <laughs> would do he would be a hundred percent into it and he starts staring at me and I'm like I'm ready for him to leave so I can just get ready right by myself the thought of putting a camera on me while I'm getting ready that's no that's a, an immediate no but secondly to start airing out Shit that nobody cares about. And here's what bothers me is clearly people do care what these nitwits are saying. that's the problem with society. They're feeding these stray cats. They're feeding stray cats. And you know what happens when you feed a stray cat? That motherfucker comes back for more food. Oh, here's another thing about the GRWMs. They're always in a rush and don't have time. (laughs) (laughs) So they'll sit down. They'll put the clips. They'll put the headband. They'll be like, I have to go to this wedding. I have five minutes to get ready. GRWM with me. I don't even know if they say that. showing my age. I think they say the full thing. I think they're like, get ready with me to go to this bat mitzvah. I'm, you know, I have five minutes. Like, let's do it. And I guess like the more rushed they are, the better views it gets. I don't know. They're always in a rush. They never have the time. The reason I gave bat mitzvah as an example, ladies, is because I actually watched a 12 year old get ready for a bit mitzvah. <laughs> and, um, and that her, is a new low, personal low, I imagine. Her, and you know why though, on many levels, but one of the levels is because her routine, like, is much more expansive than my routine. And her products <laughs> and everything this fucking 12 year old has with the three minutes she has left to get ready before her mom drives her to a bat mitzvah. I mean, I can't, I can't, I'm getting hot. Like I can't, it's a, <laughs> it's a wild world out there. And like, I am so grateful that I didn't have that when I was 12, that I was just like focusing on like, you know, which boys like me in the class and like writing in my journal. Cause like, what would I have been like, a, a, these are monsters. You know what I think this is? This is 
belabored one hit wonders. <laughs> That's what this is. You know, you have a one hit wonder song and everybody knows it and it's a banger, you know, and it can come out decade after decade and everybody's into it. Well, this generation, they hit one viral TikTok video or one Instagram and that should be it. It should be their one hit wonder. But people start feeding those cats, those stray cats, and they keep going back for more and more. And they're really boring, one dimensional people because... I think putting on makeup is really uninteresting. I agree. It's re- now if the girl was putting on makeup talking about, oh my god, I did a threesome the other night. I was so fucked up on cocaine. I'm in. All right. I'm hundred percent more interested. I'm watching the whole makeup video. I mean, at least if you're going to do the, let me refer to my notes here, the GRWM, put some juice with that thing. Right. I mean, Maybe there is a niche for that, though. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there are GRWMs that are like raunchy, you know, that yeah. are more raunchy than my bat mitzvah one. You know, <laughs> I have a friend. Um, she's also a podcaster and she uh, says it like it is. Uh, and she said to me, we were talking about this phenomenon. And she was like, Amanda, I think mediocrity is trending. <laughs> A hundred percent. That is a great point. That is. It was like, I think people, and she has a whole philosophy, like she wants to write a thesis. She was like, I think people want to feel better about themselves. So they watch mediocre people. (laughs) (laughs) Cause like, imagine like we're watching like Hollywood movies. Like I wanted to be, you know, like Julia Roberts, you know, like, but that didn't make me feel good about myself. Right. Maybe it makes you feel better to aspire to be someone who ain't that, that amazing. That's like, (laughs) that's attainable. Right. 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 Like I can be just like the girl that got 500,000 views that put (laughs) concealer on. Right. And then went to the coffee shop. Those are two goals that I can achieve today. Right. I can put on concealer. I can go get coffee. I've also had it with the photographs of the goddamn coffee. We've seen it. It's not new. And every time anybody goes to the coffee shop, they're Instagramming it. Like, I got coffee. And I'm like, okay, that's just being a person. Like, you're just a human that went and got a beverage. Enough with posting about it. Because everyone thinks that everyone wants to know their coffee order, too. (laughs) (laughs) You know what was so great? And by the way, I want to make it very clear. I am part of this. I think people (laughs) want to know my, I want to make it very clear that I'm a giant hypocrite because so, cause I'll, I can post my coffee and then people will be like, I'll get a few messages being like, when are you on our, and then I'll fucking share it. You know, (laughs) I'll be like, okay guys, I'm really into get this almond milk lattes. I know it's groundbreaking, but let me tell you changed my life. Don't you love things that change people's lives? That yes. don't actually change life. Like exactly. nothing has ever changed my life. Like I'm not going to take a probiotic and it's going to change my life. <laughs> right. Like, like stop telling me change your life. Cause like nothing has changed my life. Right. The only thing that changes one's life is a child. Is a child. Yes. Yeah. A baby changes everything. Totally. Aside from that, um, can't say that any, that lemon water or fucking <laughs> anything <laughs> Changed my life. Right. I don't want to hear that it changed yours because, like, what am I doing then if nothing changes mine? (laughs) (laughs) So, Amanda, I have, I want to play a little game of would you rather. Okay. Okay. So, the first one is would you rather GRWM, and let me refer to my notes again, get, (laughs) would you rather get ready with me five days a week, three hours each session? (sighs) on your Instagram with enthusiasm. You cannot deadpan it like you do. I've seen your Instagram videos where you deadpan this shit and it's great. I mean, your delivery is excellent. You have to do it with, so what I'm doing first and you then go into personal stories and you have to be sincere about it. Five days, Monday through Friday, or every Christmas for the rest of your life with your family, post yourselves in matching Christmas pajamas on the internet. Okay, I'm going to do the five get ready with me because that's like, I I don't want to do it for the rest of my life. (laughs) Every every Christmas, Christmas, I posted um, something making fun of that because I was just kind of like, who made this up? Like, who was (laughs) like, this is a thing we do and now everyone fucking does it and you have to see everyone's, you know, photo with matching pajamas. Um, 
and and everyone laughed and then there are people that are like is it like you know the people defending it it's like right. are you really going to defend it like even if you do it you can make fun of yourself 100 right. for doing something right. that is you know the word chuggy isn't really cool anymore do you know what chuggy means no, no. chuggy it's just like so basic so vanilla so whatever and i'm not saying i could never be caught in matching pajamas but i'm just saying I could do not want it as a yearly tradition. I think it's cute as like a one time maybe thing, but now people do it every year. And it's like, they feel like it's a necessary part of their holiday. I will tell you, I, this year I succumbed because I see pictures. (laughs) I see people's Christmas cards with their matching pajamas. And I think, oh my gosh, that's so cute. So I did it this year, but I, I'm with you. I mean, it's kind of dorky, especially because well, my kids are almost all grown. This is the problem with with you get sucked in and I got, you feel like the asshole mom that's not doing the matching pajamas. That's what happened with me on National Sunday. Son, right. Like I have a son and everybody's posting their son. And I'm like, well, God damn, I better post a picture of my son. Did you? Yes. I totally yeah. fell prey to the entire internet racket of the entire thing. But right. I'm going to tell you something I've had it with with Christmas. And this needs to end. Our snail mail Christmas cards. Right. I don't know why we have them anymore. Everybody has seen what everybody is doing on the internet for the entire past year. And so back in the day, like in the late when 90s have and early it. 2000s, there wasn't social media. So you really looked forward to seeing the card and the image of the family. Now you know what everybody looks like. And then I'll hear somebody saying, well, you know. I'm not going to post this picture until after my Christmas card goes out. <laughs> I'm like, I'll tell you what, sis. I bet everybody's fucking chomping at the bit, <laughs> stalking their mailbox, going fucking Where is bananas, it? waiting for that hot right. piece of photo to come in. I'm like, what do you really think? And they have they know what you look like. They've seen your stories. They've seen you get coffee. They've seen you do yoga. They've seen you drop your kids off at school. They've seen it all. And now all of a sudden they're rolling out. Look at this new material, our <laughs> new Christmas card. Put a sock in it. Everybody knows. But you know what's the worst? Like that you'll get it from like your lawyer, like people that you work with. <laughs> and it's like, love you, but like needeth me this card? <laughs> no. I don't. And then what do you do? Like throw it out? That also feels like mean. I so, like I'm always save it. No, I've struggled with that forever. I have, I know people that inventory every year's Christmas card, like in a photo album, and they go back through over the years, and I'm like, I just their throw mine friends, away. Their friends' Christmas cards? Yes. Like Inventorium? The, well, I mean, put them in a photo album, like a normal photo album. They'll put all the Christmas cards they receive in there for all these years. So they have like 20 years worth of other people's Christmas cards, which I always feel bad. Like I need to throw them away. And then I end up throwing them away. I throw them away immediately. Now, Unless immediately. the card is about me, I don't want it. You know? <laughs> exactly. If it's like a whole essay about how amazing I am, I'm right. gonna save that card in my in a box. You and know, put it on the refrigerator, even maybe. Yeah, right. But I don't need like you know your story or your <laughs> well wishes. You know. <laughs> okay, let me ask you another one. Would you rather do the um, get ready with me five days? enthusiasm sincerely no deadpan humor amanda none of that i mean you have to be into it or go to burning man from start to finish sleep in the tent no, no. electricity and you have to how be- did you know how did you know this how did you know because how did you know i wasn't a burning man gal we've already done two episodes about how we've had it with burning man i you know the burning man people are like so pathetically into Burning Man. It's like, <laughs> it's their whole personality. Yes, we know. I just went to lunch somewhere and the owner of the restaurant came to talk to us and he was a Burning Man guy. It's like they managed to bring up Burning Man in everyday conversation. I was like eating hummus and how did Burning <laughs> Man come up? I don't know. But he started talking about it. Wouldn't shut the fuck up. I even like made it very obvious. I was like, I hate it. Like I would never be caught <laughs> dead at Burning Man. Same. It's not for me. And he was trying to like convince me, no, you have this kind of camp and this kind of camp. Right. And they're, yeah. the art, the art. I'm like, you think the art is going to get me there? <laughs> no. And that's the thing. They want everybody to be converted. It's like evangelical Christians, you know, where they want everybody to be saved. It's similar with the burners. They want 
everybody to go to Burning Man, and they it's can't. Wild. Let it go. We've had it with Burning Man so much. No, no, much. I've, I've we had have it. a T-shirt on our website that says "Boycott Burning Man" on our "I've Had It" podcast. We'll send you one. It says, <laughs> "Oh my God, Bo- Boycott oh Burning Man." God. It's a I'm gonna total go back racket. to the hummus. I'm gonna go back to the hummus plays with Wearing the owner. It. Yes, and wear it. Yes. No, I agree with you. I'm on your team, but it's isn't it really nice though? Like I, I realize that we're negative and we don't like a lot of things, but it's really nice to just know that you'll never be convinced to like something. <laughs> right. Like, like I feel so confident that I'm never gonna want to go skydiving. Like it's right. really nice to like know that you right. know be like right. never in my life. So wow, get ready with me or Burning Man. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking get ready with me. <laughs> Same tell a story. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I would do if I was single and I was on a dating app, that would be one of my filtering questions. You know, like, are you into Burning Man? Yes, no. Right. It'd be an immediate cutoff mark. Yeah. Like swipe left. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So now we're going to play another game. Kylie is going to read. uh, Pumps and I are not good at pop culture. And we have been deep diving in your Instagram and you have got this shit on lockdown. So yeah. she's going to read a quote and then we're going to guess which celebrity said it. You're probably going to win. Okay. Because we don't know, come here from Sikkim. That's what they say in Oklahoma. Yeah, we don't come know, here. come here from Sikkim in pop culture, but we're going to try. Wait, are you in Oklahoma? Yes. We're in Oklahoma City. Oh my God. I know. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Flyover so cool. state. Okay. Here goes Kylie. Who said... I get to go to lots of overseas places, like Canada. (laughs) Sarah Palin. (laughs) Wrong. Christina Aguilera. Wrong. Britney Uh, Spears. Spears. Correct. Yes. Uh, Oh, that's such a Britney thing to say. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Yes. I'm so bad at this game. I know. I thought you'd be a lot better. (laughs) (laughs) Follow me for up-to-date news. (laughs) Okay. Who said, I don't know if this is too much. But I can actually mentally give myself an orgasm. Oh fuck! I rem- Oh my gosh! Taylor Her- Swift. Oh, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga oh. can give herself no, she an can. orgasm. No, she can't. No, she can't. That would be a trick, though, wouldn't it? Okay. There's one final thing I want to talk to you about. In okay. my in my deep dive of your Instagram, you did a complete autopsy of Emily in Paris. And what I loved about this, because the yeah. whole hypocrisy. Th- thing that you say you have, we have too. I mean, we totally have that. We can flip on a dime about certain shit. But you tell your followers how much you dislike Emily in Paris and then go into detail, which (laughs) proves that you have seen Emily in Paris all the way over the finish line. (laughs) And let me tell you what I think about Emily in Paris. I watched every bit of it. It's stupid. It's vapid. It's so unrealistic. And I couldn't get enough of it. And then when it's over, I feel this like subtle depression <laughs> because I'm never going to be in my twenties and right. have that wardrobe fucking hot men in Paris. That ship has sailed, completely mm-hmm. sailed. And so I kind of get sad. But do you know what you should feel better about? It's like, it's not like it's hot. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things I said, like there wasn't any chemistry between any of them. You know, yeah. it was like, They weren't even opening their mouth for like a kiss. (laughs) It was like, I remember like Emily and Alfie just like, and they're hot and young. Like open your mouth a little bit. You know, that's what I want to see. You know, just a little French kiss in France. You're in, exactly. You're in Paris. And like Gabriel, that hot man, couldn't he be like more into women for a minute? You know, (laughs) you have Camille, you have Emily, like just fucking... Also, like, make out, make out. And I just feel like no one was was passionately making out. The and that was sexiest an issue for me. one is the French boss. Love her. The older, the yeah, French the actress. She was the so sexiest you, one. So if you watched the, the real, I think I say there, like, I want to watch Sylvie in Paris. Yes. You know? Yes. That would be cool. Like, she is just, she's doing it. She's smoking the cigs. Yes. She's. Having the young, uh, hot husband that she's not really her husband, whatever she's doing. Like she dresses so fringe. Yeah. And I don't know, Lily Collins kind of gets on my nerves sometimes. Oh my God. Somebody I follow on Instagram wrote this. Emily, <laughs> Emily Ferris needs to get Botox. Or something. <laughs> and like, that was also distracting because like, I'm, I 
I just got Vodux for the first time, like a few months ago. And up until then I was very like, everyone be natural and like, you don't need it and blah, blah, blah. Some people need it. Right. You know, and sometimes it could be distracting, like Emily from Emily in Paris. Like I, that note spoke to me because I <laughs> yes. think I was focusing on her forehead the entire season. Right. <laughs> Very expressive. Let me tell you both how bad this is. So yesterday I went to get Botox and I had let about four and a half months pass. So I go and the doctor's looking at my forehead. She's like, oh, there's this new thing. It's like this heat treatment thing. I want to sign you up for it. It's like a natural way to produce collagen. And so I can book you for that like in a month. But today we're going to get onto that Botox because you really need yeah. it. <laughs> and I just died. But I mean, it's, I mean, it'll start kicking in like tomorrow, the next day. But it takes Botox longer to is the kick best. in nowadays. I'm bought. I have Botox next week. I'm desperate for it. I'm usually like, I don't like needles and I get like anxious about like procedures, but I was like flying. I was flying. <laughs> I, it was so oh, yeah. cool. It was, it didn't hurt. It was like such a positive experience. So I flipped like hardcore flipped on. Totally. on yeah. And also I just don't feel like it, like maybe like filler changes you and people go overboard and look weird. I do have filler in my lips. She does. She is an offender. She calls me Daffy Pumps. Well, she swings by the studio because we like to read our hate comments for like Instagram content. They're hilarious. And so she swings by. And the great thing about pumps is her give a fuck meter is broken and has been broken for years and years. She could give two shits what anybody thinks. And her lip is swollen up. I mean, it is so swollen. And I go, how are we supposed to do? She goes, oh, I don't give a fuck. Let's just do it. She's talk, her lips are all, I don't give a fuck. Let's just read the hate comments. I don't care. And I am crying laughing because she looks like a duck. It was fantastic. Oh my God. I love it. Amanda, we thank you so much for joining us on I've Had It Podcast. I hope you feel better and lighter. So, you know <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. Uh -huh. This is like, this is, this is, this is a really, I, I appreciate this podcast. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I like, I really like podcasts that have like a purpose, you know? <laughs> yes. That it's not just like, here we are to like talk to you about, you know, what you do. It's like, no, you have a whole stick <laughs> yeah. and it works. And right. it's like, I love that. It's and therapy. We need I to have get so this many more. <laughs> so I know. We'll have to come so back. We have I'm going to have to come back. I have a good one. Do you use Ubers in yes. Yes. Oklahoma? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We also have the internet. Okay. So we'll talk about Ubers next time. Oh, yeah. No, I want. Okay. Yes, we definitely should talk about Ubers next time. And I want to thank you for coming on. Listener, oh, sure. you can find Amanda at Not Skinny But Not Fat. And her podcast goes by the same name. Great name. Thank you. Thank you, listener. Yes, thank <laughs> you, listener. Thank you, listener. I love how you call them like individually. Listeners. <laughs> we have to bring the listener in. We bring yeah. Oh, you're like, in. oh, it's like a tactic. Like you're talking to the one person. Yeah. <laughs> or one ever. listener. We have one listener. Okay. Okay. Your Instagram about. is going to blow up. You're going to have 741,000. And then that, when you see that one uptick, that's going to be the I've had it hit. That's right. Listener, the listener. The thank one listener. That's right. Uh huh. All right. Thank Thanks, you, Amanda. Amanda. Bye guys. Thank you for having me. See you later. Bye-bye. She's great. She is so great. I love her like default setting of... Okay, I totally have had it with this, but two days later, I totally did it. Right, which is us. A hundred percent is Love us. Love that. Half the shit that we've had it with, we're offenders. A hundred percent. Like and you we started with the grocery store thing, and I can totally see you start yakking with somebody in front of you in line. I, I, I've actually been to Target with you. And you'll start, oh, my God, if you, are you buying that book? I just read that book. That book is so good. I read it in two days on the beach. Yeah, my, you know, we went here. I probably do do that. But uh -huh. I feel like it's not premeditated. I'm not walking into Target thinking I'm going to chat up the person behind me. Right, right. It's just, you know. Right. I am kind of a chatter. You are. A little bit chatty. You are. You are a little chatterbox. I've got one more quote. That okay. I want to give to you. Okay. See, see, see if, if we know it. it. Yeah. Okay. I don't think she could find her own ass with both hands and a flashlight. Oh, that's me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Well, I'll tell you who is the originator of that is Linda Martis, yes. my mother. Linda has got some sayings. Yeah, yeah. She definitely, definitely has some sayings. The one I wrote down for pumps. Anybody want to give me a pelvic exam? <laughs> <laughs> when did I say that?
<laughs> it's on the internet. It's on the show. You say that shit all the time. See, I don't I don't remember half the shit I say. I don't even know when it's coming out of my mouth that I'm saying it. I, it's kind of diary of the mouth city over here. Do you remember this one? I need to go smoke right now because I don't want to get unaddicted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, so I stand by that when I was a smoker. Back in the day, uh, Pumps and I both smoked. Our kids were super little. There was this giant ice storm. And she's like, hey, come over. And we had these fucking mink coats. And I don't know why on earth we had these No, we were at the club. No, but this day we warmed during the day. Okay. Because it was like, it was an ice storm. And I don't know why in our 30s we had old lady mink coats. But we fucking had these brown old lady mink coats that we both had. And it's so cold outside. We're like, okay, let's wear the minks. So we both had the minks. We go outside and Pumps is like, I'm certain I have the flu. And she has like 102 fever. (laughs) And I'm like, are you sure you want to smoke? And you're like, it's the last thing I want to do right now, but I can't be not addicted to cigarettes. I got to push through. So she pushed through the flu with the cigarette in the mink coats. And how dorky were we running around with the mink coats? I'll still wear a mink coat like to a football game if it's cold and snowy. I have no shame at all. I remember we were at some party at the country club. Yes. And we went outside in our mink coats and we were lighting up cigs, hiding from everybody. Yeah. And you go, well, look at us out here in our <laughs> mink coats. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. We were undercover as proper ladies. Uh-huh. Proper ladies. Well, listener, please. DM us a voice memo to I've Had It Podcast. Go write a review. Go give us five stars. Follow us. We are on all of the social medias. I believe we are on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We have Twitter. We have Facebook. I don't think anybody does anything to it, but we have one. Technically, if we ever needed it. Yeah, in a pinch. In a pinch. We had to put out an urgent message. If we have to put out a, you know, yeah, an urgent Breaking news. Breaking news. (laughs) Breaking news. Breaking news. Uh Uh-huh. All right. See you next Tuesday. Let's hear it.